Welcome back to Ask Austin Harley. Today we're gonna to be visiting one of my colleagues' rental properties that he just bought the other day. We're gonna be going through the entire property to show you what we're gonna to do to it to make it a bulletproof rental like I've been talking about in my other videos. And I'm gonna break down the numbers for how much he bought it, how he's gonna rent it out, where he's gonna find the tenants, so on and so forth, and I'm gonna track the progress throughout. If you watch any of my other videos on YouTube, you've probably seen that I'm most of the time just standing in front of a whiteboard over here, but I wanted to switch it up a little bit. So I'm asking you a favor. If you see any content in this video that that's kind of a drag that maybe is just not too exciting, then please leave it in the comment section, timestamp it, let me know so I can improve my videos because I'm trying to make it more entertaining for you, the viewer, because standing in front of a whiteboard and teaching you something is only gonna go so far and I really wanna give you some hands-on examples of what we're actually doing in the field. And like always, subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up if you wanna see more content like this. You sure? Yeah. Not harder. All right, so we're getting ready to go to the rental property. All right, so we're driving down to the rental property now, and something really significant about the way Devin bought this property is he got all of his closing costs covered. Heck, he even got paid to buy this house, which I'm gonna explain later on in this video. But getting your closing costs covered is probably one of the most essential things whenever you're buying anything in real estate. Unless you're getting an extremely low, below market value house, you wanna get all your closing costs covered. And closing costs consist of transfer taxes, attorney fees, title company fees, anything that I like to say goes straight to the trash and not into your pocket or into the equity of the house. So the goal of buying any type of real estate, this is extremely important, is that you want to pay directly towards the down payment of the house or directly towards into the equity because obviously you want to build your wealth and that's the reason that you're purchasing real estate. And then towards the end of this video, what I'm gonna show you is how we accumulate our cash on cash return because I believe that Devin bought this rental property to accumulate the most cash from the cash that he's putting out in this property. Like I stated in many of my other videos, one of the most important things that you can do whenever you're purchasing real estate, especially for investment purposes, is understanding the fact that if you come out of pocket 30,000, how fast from renting out this property or from flipping it can you get that money back? So stay tuned, we'll see you at the rental property soon. All right, so we're here at the house. Devin, what's up, man? How you doing? How you doing? All right, let's start. So, this is the rental property, it's under construction right now. Devin, why don't you give us a tour of the house, tell us what you're doing, and uh, we can go from there. Devin, what are your plans on this kitchen? What are you gonna do to it? So basically, it's super simple. I'm just going to remove this wall. There was already a wall right here that came down as a separator between the living room and the dining room and the uh, the kitchen here as well. And I'm gonna remove the entire wall, open it up, scrape these popcorn ceilings out completely, get the kitchen going, and then run engineered floors on the uh, ground here. Really a big reason why I'm replacing these cabinets. The lady, she had been here previously for over 40 years. So she had various different cabinets. They were really dirty and there really wasn't a lot of function to the kitchen. And nowadays a lot of people are looking for that in a rental. When you walk into these cut, you know, cookie cutter flips or whatever and you go in, you'll find in a lot of them there's only one drawer. And so where are you gonna put your silverware? So it's easy to think as like a landlord or a construction person or whatever, but you really have to think about the functional utility. Another reason why, as I started to dig through things out in this house. I found a lot of those fogger, cockroach, you know, killing cans and stuff like that. So once I started to peel back things little by little, I started to see a lot of these little brown spots. You can kind of see them in there as well. And I just really wanted to make sure everything was fresh and clean. So one of the really cool things about this house that we liked, is it had originally carpet throughout the whole house. Now, Devin has two options with this. If you're on a budget budget, you can just honestly sand these floors down, quickly refinish them, and then just run it hardwood throughout, which actually increases the value of the house. What would you do if you were just a starter landlord? I probably wouldn't worry about taking any walls down. It might increase the appeal, but overall, as long as you're in a hot area, you can just make sure the paint's fresh, the flooring's clean, and you'll be able to rent it right out. All right, so these are actually the old cabinets, and just goes to show you, uh, Devin might be a little bit uh, excessive on what he's doing here, but if you are planning on renting out your house and your cabinets look decent like this, you can keep them, you don't have to replace them. But it's got a nice solid deck, the deck doesn't even really need a power wash, it's got a really nice backyard for someone. There's going to be three bedrooms in the bathroom as well. You'll notice there's wallpaper on the side here. A lot of people remove it, but it can be very costly. 
one thing you'll find is that in a lot of rentals, people actually end up painting over them, which is not the right thing to do. Yeah. However, <laughs> it does work sometimes. And the carpet's in really good condition if you want to get a shot of that. Honestly, if it were me renting, uh, know your market, understand your area, I would get this carpet steam clean. Yeah, so this is the full bath. One thing you'll notice, a lot of people think on the floor that that's like a dated 1950s look, but you'll find this really in a lot of homes now. This was popular in like the early 2000s and can easily be resealed. Yeah, and then one other thing we want to know is to get your bathroom's market ready for rent is you want to make sure that everything is sealed, caulked up, and nice and clean and that there's no leaks. I haven't got lucky on this one. It has tile all the way to the ceiling, so there's not going to be any wet stains. Tenants tend to damage anything that has to do with water, and this vanity is actually pretty decent. It really doesn't need anything. I always check under here to make sure there's no leaks or anything like that, and it's all solid. Good to go. So you've got three bedrooms in the house. This is the smaller of the three. Oftentimes when you buy these properties off market and below value, they like to leave a lot of their belongings. So, so tiny. <laughs> yeah, and that's why you've got a treadmill in here. The home gym. <laughs> yes, this is the home gym. This is the master, right? This is the master bedroom? This is the master bedroom as well. So definitely not gonna need a ton of work. It already has a six panel door on the right there. Everything is pretty updated. Yeah, so actually all the trim in this house is already updated completely. You've got six panel doors. None of this is original to the house. There's maybe one door that I'll replace. As a landlord, if you're gonna replace any doors, I always tell people, get the closest thing to a solid core door as possible because your tenants are gonna find ways to punch holes in the doors. If they lock the door, they don't think about sticking a little pin in there and unlocking it. They will just kick it in yeah. and that'll be your life, so. Really good point, really good point. So after all the construction is done, obviously Devin's gonna get the house professionally cleaned to get the tenants in. And the reason I note that is because you always wanna make sure that the filters are changed, that the vents are clean, because vents are one of the cheapest things we do. And this is actually the same thing we do whenever we sell our houses on the market. You want to make sure that it just looks clean. I mean, the little details really do matter. So why don't we go check out the basement, Devin? Show us that and uh, we can go from there. All right. So one of the challenges that I'm running into now as you come downstairs is for some reason they didn't build this house two feet wider. So when you get to the bottom of the staircase, you have to either step down to the right or to the left. And that can be kind of difficult because as you're trying to break things up and maximize your rental potential, really having complete privacy floor to floor is a big deal. But if you come this way, we have what will be one bedroom eventually, but to make it a legal bedroom, a window has to be cut in. For a beginner landlord, or it's not something that I would recommend. That's a tanner? Yeah, so I can tan my butt while I'm uh, working on the house. So one of the coolest things about buying rentals is you find really cool stuff. This yeah, so crazy. I actually had my dad here who's <laughs> really old, and uh, he actually recognized some of, some of these people, and uh, I guess he's going to take that out, but... What did you buy this house for? This house sold for $275,000. Probably another 50 grand worth of uh, collectible. Yeah. Oh, well let's talk about the elephant in the room. So what the heck is this? So this is a wood stove and it's actually a really nice wood stove. A lot of people don't understand how these work. From a functional perspective, these are actually your best bet for heating your home because you can literally chop wood, toss it in, it circulates it. Another thing that you'll find is all the personal documents of the last person who lived here She's and all their mortgage them. statements. <laughs> However, she forgot to actually burn them. And so with this, actually being one of the most efficient ways to heat a home. Problem is it completely takes up the space. Even though it might make the most sense from a fiscal perspective, I'm actually going to be cutting the pipe, filling the hole, and completely removing this wood stove because otherwise there's really no use for this room. Well that actually kind of adds to it because I think Devin's main point of this house is it's actually a rambler. It's just a regular ranch style house that's two levels in ground basement. And I believe you're going to be renting it per level, right? Yes. To get double cash flow? Yeah, so tell us, how are you going to do that? So basically, uh, one of the biggest things that I have to solve over there, which we'll get back to, is how to actually get access to both bedrooms without having to enter into the other person's space. But it's quite simple. The reason why I bought this house, or one of the biggest reasons, is it has an out, a walkout basement. So you see this door right here. The tenants that end up ultimately renting this space, they're going to have their own private entrance as well as their own private living space. One of the biggest things to look for as well is does it already have a bathroom in the basement? Right over here you have a second full bathroom in the basement and I don't know if you want to go in there and take a look at everything. It's tiny. Yeah, it's tiny. You've got a toilet and a sink but hiding behind this door right here you actually have a full stand in shower that has ceramic tile from floor to ceiling. This is the utility room. What I'm ultimately gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to cut a door in right here to access that other bedroom. I'm gonna run a wall this way so that you'll have a bedroom with an egress and then you'll have another bedroom on the other side with another egress that I will cut in as well. So 
it'll work out so that this whole space will be a hallway. It'll look really great and I'll get it all set up. So great. So coming around the other side of the house here, we're going to take a trip back to the, uh, the detached garage here. And another thing Devin's going to do to add value is extending this down to the garage right there. And you can actually see at one point, it looks like they probably had some sort of driveway going back here, but they allowed it to get completely overrun. Is he's going to add a either one or two car garage door to that and uh, either gravel, which is probably the cheapest door. I just a few feet of concrete down here to increase the rents and i mean how much are we looking at doing that depends i mean if somebody's just going to rent it you can typically get in this area maybe a hundred to two hundred dollars per month extra but if you're fortunate enough to get a tenant that's in some some kind of a trade construction maybe a carpet guy and they want to store their equipment in there it can be a lot more maybe 500 to 800 dollars. and how much would it cost to get all this set up with the garage door the gravel all the way down you could probably get it done for 2500 to four thousand dollars so 2,500 to 4,000 and you're looking at a maximum of $500 more a month. That's a pretty quick cash on cash return, but let's check out this garage. Welcome right. to my crib. <laughs> Welcome to MTV Cribs. <laughs> Great. So, oh, this is huge. Yeah, so this is actually a pretty large uh, detached garage here, but it's all concrete. It's got a drain. It's got plenty of storage. It does have electric as well. There's a 100 amp hookup in here. Wow. You can rent this. Absolutely. So it'll definitely be a rental. All right. Well, I think that's enough tour of the house. Let's go talk about the numbers and see what Devin is actually doing with this house to make some real money. All right, cool. So we got the tour of the house. Now, Devin, let's talk through some numbers and talk through the tenants first. First off, once you finish all the work on this house, how are you going to be able to rent it? How are you going to find a tenant? So there's a lot of different ways to find a tenant, but when you're in a situation where you're splitting a house up and renting out multiple areas, my opinion, the best place to go is either going to be Zillow, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist. Despite what everybody says, you can actually find some really great tenants on Craigslist as long as you vet them properly. Perfect. And how much are you going to charge? The upstairs is going to be 1500 and the downstairs is going to be 1250 maybe a little bit more and keep in mind that's with him paying the utilities are you going to provide uh, internet service anything of that sort yeah so i'm going to provide internet service cool so the idea behind this is to kind of make it like an apartment complex how did you come up with this pricing strategy of 1500 and 1250 i mean where did you get those numbers from well being a local realtor uh myself i actually work with a lot of different clients that are in this area and believe it or not there's people in this area that are renting basements for 1400 in the condition that mine is already in right now also taking a look at local apartment complexes to price the rental rate just below because think about it I mean if you're renting an apartment you don't really get the highest grade uh, or the nicest apartment uh, let's just say for the local one that's fifteen or sixteen hundred dollars if Devin can come in with the uh, value of having a brand new kitchen having the privacy a, pr a private driveway in a single-family house with a yard in charge just under what apartment complexes are charging he's not only gonna be able to find tenants faster but he's gonna be able to rent it out easier and tenants are gonna be happier which makes the landlord's job a lot Easy. All right, so let's talk about the money part, the very interesting stuff, the reason why you're watching this video in the first place, which is what's the cash on cash return? Devin, how much did you come out of pocket to buy this house? It was 3% of uh, 275,000, so I believe that's 88,250. What's your monthly mortgage? It's $1,690. It's gonna take him about two to three weeks to get the house completely market ready. By that time on the fourth or fifth week of having all the construction done, the goal is to have a tenant lined up so that his out-of-pocket waste is only for the construction material. And whenever you buy a new house, the mortgage payment is typically delayed one month. So tenants will start paying you if everything lines up right and all the construction goes well as soon as your first mortgage payment is actually due. Now let's take a look and focus on the actual equity of the house. So you bought the house for 275,000. After you do all these upgrades, which I think we tallied it up to around eleven to fifteen thousand, depending on if you do the furnace or not. That brings your total cash in around nineteen thousand two hundred and fifty. So let's just round it up and call it twenty grand to get the house market ready. Okay, that's all in two ninety five. What is the house going to be worth after you finish? Everything. Basically, depending on the appraiser that I get um, when everything is said and done, it'll be somewhere between three hundred and forty and three hundred sixty thousand. So the instant equity from coming out of pocket around twenty thousand over the course of thirty days comes to a tally of around forty-five to fifty thousand. 
And on top of that, if you can find someone to rent out that garage for equipment like a local landscaping company just starting up, that's an additional $500 to $600 a month. So a little yep. over $3,000 in rent for having a $1,600, $1,500 mortgage. So we regurgitated a ton of information on you. And the point of us making this video is to give you a realistic example. So we're going to be giving you updates. Give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave a comment in the comment section down below if you think that you have any questions or you want to gain access to how to find these deals. I'm going to be coming out with a ton of new videos in the future teaching how to get access to these wedge deals or these below market properties. But really, in a nutshell, Devin didn't really get like an amazing deal on this property. It's the value that he's bringing to it that is giving him the equity and building his wealth. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section and we'll catch you in the next one.